the American dream is based on rampant consumerism. It, it, it is based upon the fact that mainstream media and especially commercial advertising, uh, all corporations who need this infinite growth have convinced us or brainwashed uh, most people in America and hence the world that uh, we have to have X number of material possessions and the possibility of gaining in infinitely more material possessions in order to be happy. That's just not true. So how, why do people continue to, to buy in this way, which is ultimately eco-genocidal in its systemic effects, cumulatively? And it just is classical operant conditioning. You simply put inputs of conditioning into the organism, and you have outputs of uh, desired behaviors or goals or objectives. And it has all the resources of technology and they boast about how they get into the minds of infants. What they hear uh, is already making them conditioned to the brand. Then you see, well, that's how uh, people have been such fools, in a way they've been taught to be fools. It's a value system a disorder. You know, if there is any testament to the plasticity of the human mind, if there is any proof to how malleable human thought is and how easily conditioned and guided people can become based on the nature of their environmental stimulus and what it reinforces, the world of commercial advertising is the proof. You have to stand in awe at the level of brainwashing where these programmed robots known as consumers wander the landscape only to walk into a store and spend, say, four thousand dollars on a handbag that likely cost ten dollars to make in a sweatshop overseas only for the brand status it supposedly represents in the culture or perhaps the ancient communal traditions which increase trust and cohesiveness in society which have now been hijacked by acquisitive materialistic values where now annually we exchange useless crap a few times a year and we might wonder why so many today have a compulsion to shopping and acquisition when it is clear that they have been conditioned from childhood to expect material goods as a sign of their status with friends and family. The fact is, the foundation of any society are the values that support its operation. And our society, as it exists, can only operate if our values support the conspicuous consumption it requires to continue the market system. Seventy-five years ago, consumption in America and much of the first world was half of what we see today per person. Today's new consumer culture has been manufactured and imposed due to the very real need for higher and higher levels of consumption. And this is why most corporations now spend more money on advertising than the actual process of product creation itself. They work diligently to create a false need for you to fill and it happens to work. You know, economists, in fact, not a, economists at all. They're propagandists of money value. And uh, you'll find that all their models basically get down to token exchanges that uh, are to the profit of one side or both sides or whatever, but they're completely disconnected from the actually existing world of reproduction. Um, in Ohio, an old man failed to pay his electric bill. You may be familiar with the case. And the electric company turned off the electricity and he died. The reason they turned it off was because it wouldn't have been profitable for them to keep it on because he didn't pay his bill. Do you believe that was right? The responsibility really lies not on the electric company for turning it off, but on those of this man's neighbors and friends and associates who are not charitable enough to enable him as an individual to meet the electric bill. Hmm, did I hear that right? Did he just say the death of a man caused by not having money was the responsibility of other people or in effect charity? <laughs> well then, I guess we're gonna need a whole lot of infomercials, a uh, little miserable coin slot donations for bodega counters, and a bunch of pickle jars for the billion people now starving to death on this planet because of the very system Milton Friedman promotes. Whether you are dealing with the philosophies of Milton Friedman, F.A. Hayek, John Maynard Keynes, Ludwig von Mises, or any other major market economist, the basis of rationale rarely leaves the money sequence. It is like a religion 
consumption analysis, stabilization policies, deficit spending, aggregate demand. It exists as a never-ending, self-referring, self-rationalizing circle of discourse where universal human need, natural resources, or any form of physical life-supporting efficiency is ruled out by default and replaced by the singular notion that humans seeking advantage over each other for money alone, motivated by their own narrow self-interest, will magically create a sustainable, healthy, balanced society. There is no life coordinate in this whole theory, this whole doctrine. What are they doing? What are they doing? What they're doing is tracking money sequences. That's all it is, is tracking money sequences, presupposing everything that matters. One, that there's no life uh, coordinates. Wow, no life coordinates. Two, that all the agents are self-maximizing preference seekers. That is, they think of nothing other than themselves and what they can get most for themselves. That, that no, that's the notion, that's the ruling notion of rationality. Self-maximizing choice. And, and the only thing that they're interested in self-maximizing is money or commodities. Well, where does social relations come in? It doesn't accept in the exchange to self-maximize. Where do our natural resources come in? They don't accept to exploit. Where does the family come in as being able to survive? It doesn't. Uh, they have to have money in order to purchase any good. Well, shouldn't an economy deal somewhere with human need? Isn't that what the full fundamental issue is to satisfy uh, human needs? Oh, need isn't even in your lexicon. Uh, you dissolve it into wants. And what is a want? That means money demand that wants to buy. Well, if it's money demand that wants to buy, it's got nothing to do with need because it may be the person has no money demand and desperately needs, say, water supply. <laughs> or it may be money demand wants a gold toilet seat. Well, where does it all go? To the gold toilet seat. And you call this economics? Like it's really, when one thinks of it, it's got to be the most bizarre uh, delusion in the history of human thought.